Greetings, power addicts. Welcome back to Disenthrall. I will be Patrick Smith. Some viewers have asked me to watch this video, a short video that Steven Crowder, probably the world's, one of the world's, maybe the world's most popular conservative uh, figure put out recently. I have not seen this uh, whole video, so this will be my first time through it. And I will be giving my thoughts. Uh, the name of his video is why I'm a recovering libertarian. So this ought to be interesting. So you may see in the short term saying, well, you don't want to extend a hand. No, I see what handouts lead to. And because I don't want to see the destruction of not only society, but the human spirit, I'm a conservative. I think it's the most empathetic worldview that you can possibly have. I'm a recovering. Oh, wow. Now, if you look at what I believe and you look at where uh, I would sort of line up on policies, I certainly would lean much closer to the libertarian side of the spectrum, but I don't like using the word. The reason for it is when you have uh, throughout time, like Greg Gutfeld, Bill Maher, Glenn Beck, and the Reason Magazine people all claiming to be libertarians, what does it mean? Yeah. And then when you watch the libertarian debates, it's just a bunch of people with lisps arguing about weed and cryptocurrency. <laughs> It is true that people like himself, even in this video says that he leans very libertarian. Many people, most people, I would argue, lean libertarian. They want to be free. They want to let other people be free. And then they put a giant asterisk on the end of that statement where then they list all of the ways they want to control people. Crowder is absolutely no different. Uh, Bill Maher, absolutely no different. This is, this is what we get from both sides of the spectrum. It's, it's why the term libertarian has been dragged all over the place, stretched in all directions. It's because everybody really, if you can sit down and talk with them about it, they agree on the core fundamentals that people should be left alone and should be free of coercion and control and fascistic government, except for whatever their particular asterisk is. Uh, so, I mean, what can we do about this? Really not much. I mean, you don't have control over the labels people use. So I don't think there's a whole lot there for me, but I do believe that originalist sort of federalism, conservatism certainly lines up more with libertarianism, but we do find ourselves. The principles of conservatism definitely line up for the most part with libertarianism. They are for sound money. They're, they profess to be for rights though they're very inconsistent on most of those principles, libertarianism would be like the consistent version of a lot of the Republican principles. Else, right now at a point in this country where it can't possibly function. And let me explain to you why. Liber okay, so whatever he's about to say is going to be a misconstruing of libertarian principle. Leaving people alone, not controlling them, not taking their stuff, and defending everyone against the bad people can't function. Okay. Well, whatever definition of libertarianism he's about to use is not going to be what I just said. Libertarianism is a preventative measure. It works if you set it up from a framework of small government and you maintain it. This is, well, I nailed that, didn't I? Libertarianism absolutely has the solution to tyranny and absolutely can tell you exactly how to free yourself. You resist the bad guys trying to control you. How do you resist them? Well, the Republicans would tell you to vote harder, pleb. Just keep voting and voting and voting and ignoring all of the hundreds of years of data that we have showing that voting doesn't protect your rights and neither does the Constitution. Just keep doing the same thing over and over, pretending you're not insane for it. Whereas libertarian principle says that anybody trying to control you at the point of a gun against your consent is an enemy and can be resisted using justified force. Now, certainly most political libertarians certainly would advocate voting. Okay. Yeah, sure. But that doesn't mean defending yourself is not also on the table. Now, I, again, like I'm not advocating that everybody go out and, uh, use force to defend themselves. That's a, a longer discussion for sure. But, um, to say that libertarian, uh, libertarian principle, libertarianism doesn't contain the solution is precisely false. It contains the solution that none of the other ideologies actually uh, contain or espouse self-defense. It is not a recovery. It is not a curative measure. And right now we are at Elim a point eliminating the tyrants definitely is a curative measure <laughs> in this country. We're 
unlike republicanism which just tells you to vote the tyrants out and you know pray that the, the people you vote in don't make it all worse which they always do every time preventative measure like libertarianism can you can't fight something aggressive meaning thousands of pages of new legislation each day by saying well there shouldn't be any i understand that yeah maybe not within the bounds of his republican left right dichotomy uh, but libertarianism operates outside of that. Libertarianism operates on the principle of self-ownership and property rights, which is at direct odds and is the antithesis of the government that he is proud of and supports. But there is, and it almost never gets taken off the books. And the idea of free markets, which I support, free enterprise, I support. I've always Unless it's a product that he doesn't like, such as various forms of um, vegetation, let's say drugs, let's say, um, forms of association like, uh, gay marriage, for example, um, all the, the long, the litany of things, the, uh, the military industrial complex, the, the wars, all the, the long lists of things that Republicans have supported over the years that are anti-free market, all the, the regular, he's recently as what a month ago called for regulation on social media companies to come communitize like a commie to have the government step in and control these companies because they are banning speech that he likes and he doesn't like that. And so he's going to run off to the government. That is anti expressly anti free market said, I'm not the party of big business, the party of small business. I'm the party of good business. The problem is there really are no free markets in the biggest industries that exist in the world today. And really when you look and all the hundreds of years of your voting has not fixed that at all. Hasn't even slowed it down. In fact, anybody can make the case that a lot of the Republican votes have accelerated that process to where we are now. We have data for that. Your system doesn't work. Your remedies make it worse instead of better. Look at one of the few legitimate purviews of government. It is to protect us from threats, both external and internal. And, and it already didn't do that. It has already failed. The failure has already happened. The constitution as a protective document, a guarding document of our rights has already failed. And to keep, I don't know, reminiscing about it, like, like, it, like hitting the fainting couch and, and <sighs> wanting the good old days where the constitution actually protected people's rights. This is absurd. You already lost and you don't even realize it yet. And you're still playing the same strategy that got you the L that you're, that you're holding right now. To ensure that everyone is playing by the rules that rules that might harm somebody. Yeah. Uh, and certainly now when you look at the organizations, we'll get like all the police that Republicans unleashed on the world to enforce their drug laws into big tech, big banks, airlines, health insurance companies. They are causing direct harm to the American citizens and they are doing so with carte blanche from our federal government. 25% of the world's incarcerated population is in the U S 500,000 Americans are behind bars on any given night for a drug law violation. We, we just have to keep reminding them of the actual harm that they cause. Right. Well, too big to fail. I mean, you're, you're supposed to have a level playing field so that people can come in and compete. And that's what keeps goods and services more affordable and mm -hmm. gives everybody the opportunity to innovate. Once you have these big companies set up in the government backing them up, that's no longer the case. Exactly. So first, do we have a, we don't have a stinger for question, do we? I got a stinger. Oh, all right. Oh. So question. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, what so is fun. libertarianism? I didn't know we had that. <laughs> what is libertarianism? Okay. Have a definition here. A political philosophy maintaining that all persons are the absolute owners of their own lives and should be free to do whatever they wish with their persons or property, provided they allow others the same liberty. Not There's bad. nothing there with which I disagree. Right. To be clear, uh, there's a, a moral psychologist, I guess is his title. He definitely disagrees. He's just not being challenged. And it's kind of strange that he, you know, will go to these college campuses and debate a bunch of people with underdeveloped frontal lobes, but he won't actually go head to head with a strong libertarian uh, opponent on these issues that would call him out on the, on the areas in which he would actually disagree with the statement he just read. Uh, Jonathan Haidt had uh, an interesting hypothesis on sort of how libertarians think. Here's a clip. There is a big sex difference here. Men are generally higher on uh, systemizing. Women are generally higher on empathizing. And what we find um, is that libertarians are, in a sense, the most masculine 
out there. Libertarian men are the highest on systemizing of any of the three groups, and they are the lowest on empathizing. Same thing for women. Okay. Now, first off, let me just say, I, I, I disagree with that as it applies to conservatism. Uh, I understand the idea that libertarianism is, uh, you know, people might be low on the empathy scale. I will tell you, I am a conservative. I'm a constitutionalist. I'm a federalist because I am hyperly empathetic. Yeah, I, I agree with Crowder that those, uh, those polls usually judge a person to be low on empathy when they say that they would want an outcome to be structured such that somebody suffers a negative outcome. For example, um, let's take the masks as an example, right? So uh, the libertarian position is that you get to make the rules for your property and your body. And if you want people to not have to wear masks on your property, uh, and if you want to not wear a mask on your body, then that is your right. Even if let's say hypothetically that causes someone else to get COVID and get sick, they would, they would flag you as less empathetic for having that position, even though you can be perfectly empathetic. You can feel bad for people that get sick and still support the principle of property rights and self-ownership. <clears throat> and um, it's the difference between empathy and sympathy. Sympathy is agreement. Like somebody made a decision that maybe ended up in a, in a bad outcome. And if you were in their shoes, you would have made that same uh, decision. Empathy is like, look, I may or may not have been in your shoes, but you know, I can empathize. I can, I can, you know, in my head, I can put myself in your shoes and, and I can feel bad or empathize with you over that. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree with Crowder on that point. I look at the people of Venezuela. I look at the people of, you look at the people under Stalin's regime. You look at the people under Castro. He doesn't empathize with all the families that have been destroyed by the drug war or overseas in the wars, et cetera, et cetera. You, currently when we're talking about Venezuela, uh, I mean, take your pick, China. Yeah. I look at them and I say, it's never possibly worked. So you may see in the short term saying, well, you don't want to extend a hand. No, I see what handouts lead to. And because I don't want to see the destruction of not only society, but the human spirit, I'm a conservative. I think it's the most empathetic worldview that you can possibly have. No, he's selectively empathetic, not consistent. Yeah, absolutely. It's the only one that allows for compassion because government is never compassionate. Libertarianism is maximal compassion. It's not the only one that allows for compassion. Conservatism has compassion in certain areas and complete blind spots in others. And um, what would you say? The left has the same issue. They have different blind spots, but the same blind spot, nevertheless. Because it's, it, they're dealing with numbers that are too big to be compassionate. You're right. not dealing with one, you're dealing with thousands, millions of people. And so you can't be compassionate with that. And that's why you see uh, leftist individuals, they donate far less to charity than yeah. conservatives. The single two biggest determining factors, I think it was uh, uh, Brooks wrote this, a book called Who Really Cares, if I'm not mistaken. Guys in the uh, edit bay, you can, you can let me know if that's right. Uh, discussed who gave to charity. And the single biggest determining factors were your faith, religion, and uh, your political persuasion. Yeah, and it was Christian, massively It was different. a huge difference, because yeah. you have Nancy Pelosi saying, no, the, <laughs> the, the empathetic thing is, uh, is to have open borders and to give all the money to government and less than 1% to charity, and yeah, go weed whack my lawn. That's how they, it's rules for thee and not for me. Right, well, but it dissuades I completely agree, and, and I would love to see uh, even more libertarians giving to charity, uh, even though it's getting more and more difficult with inflation and taxation and all the ways the government has destroyed the economy over the last couple of years, it's definitely harder to give to charity. But I would definitely like to see uh, more libertarians focused on doing well in that regard as well. Just their guilt, right? They're like, oh, I, I, can, I can just, you know, pay taxes and do this. The government's response. Shout out to voluntaryvirtue.org, the, non, the 501c3 nonprofit charity organization. Uh, you can check it out. It is a uh, voluntarist, libertarian owned and operated charity responsible for doing this the charitable view is i'm responsible for helping my local community so i'll give to charity locally right and let these guys go and do the work and i'll also volunteer and not write off my underwear joseph biden yeah remember when he did that yes wrote off underwear i don't know you could i didn't know you could have write-offs for skin well, <laughs> especially for his underwear they're like eight thousand dollars in depends you bullshit here let's go to this uh a few examples you are at a point now where the libertarian argument can't apply when you're talking about big tech when you're talking about these giant non-government entities that have more influence over the government and over your life than even the government would be justified in exerting. Let me give you a few examples. Okay, Facebook. Start with Facebook. They are an arm of left-wing government, just to be clear. Uh, they don't allow any opinions that contradict what? What? Government agencies. Hmm. 
or like the CDC or international governing agencies. Okay, I, I'm going to make the counter case for Facebook later. So I, I'm 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 agreeing to a certain extent on some of the big tech not being or should that not deserving the respect of quote unquote private property, um, but his reasons are not so good. In this case, if I own a piece of property and, and own my property, I make rules that say you're not allowed to disagree with a government. That doesn't make me a, a wing of the government. That just makes me somebody that's making probably dumb rules for my property. That's You don't get to erase property rights because somebody agrees with another organization that you don't like. Like the WHO, who, by the way, don't acknowledge Taiwan's existence. Hold on a second. Here. Is that political? Is it political? Is this a private industry or is it political? If Everything's political now. The left has seen to that. Every single thing is politicized. They are taking marketing orders from the WHO who does not acknowledge Taiwan's existence. Because, by the way, acknowledging Taiwan's existence might be the reason for World War III. I got that clip if you want. <laughs> Oh, of them not even acknowledging the... Yeah. yeah. You know Let's pull this up. It's bone chilling. The WHO considered Taiwan's <clears throat> membership. Come again. She's cute. Hello? We, 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 the, we, I, can't hear, I couldn't hear your question. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let me, let, let, me, let me repeat the question. No, that's so. okay. Let, let's move to another one then. Right, because, because I'm, I'm actually curious on talking about Taiwan as well, on Taiwan's case. Oh my goodness. Here's the thing. That was crazy. That I'm most upset because it's wrong. I'm most upset because I'm jealous that you can just do that. I was about to say, you can, you can do that? You can just end an interview and it's like, everybody's like, oh yeah, sorry. Just Any argument in a relationship, like, well, why didn't you take out the trash? <laughs> you know what the most fun part is about not being able to post information that can't contradict one of those? I'm going to guess it's not fun, but go. It's when the WHO and the CDC don't agree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not your property. It's Facebook servers. And again, I can make a better counter argument than what they're doing. Uh, these are just bad arguments. These are not justifications for erasing property rights. Mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. you can't you can't be like, hey, the WHO said because the CDC is like, no, we don't agree or vice versa. And right. Like, I, what, I didn't That's like having an anymore. alcoholic father who beats your mother who's also an alcoholic and beats him back. Zuckerberg also emailed Dr. Fauci personally in March 2020 to collaborate with the NIH to ensure, quote, people get authoritative information mm. from reliable sources. Again, this is, these are this is a terrible argument against property rights uh, for Facebook. I can do way better. Like, like if I made a rule for my house and and I called up Fauci and was like, "Hey, how should I? What what rules should I make for my house?" And he gave me a list of rules, and I said, "Okay, well, that's the rules for my house." I, I have not rightfully lost my property rights to my home or to my property. This is a terrible argument. Uh, not to mention, of course, Facebook's decision to ban the 45th president until at least 2023 for public safety concerns. What is a public safety concern? Facebook is, n n I, I, I am not enslaved. Facebook is not enslaved to allowing people on their servers just because they've been your president. We don't you want to do win. better than this. Come on. We, we don't want them to win. Really don't want they don't to have win. to want so, him to win. Was this private enterprise? Is this free market? When yeah. people say, go create your own Facebook. That how much do you is. Do that? How do you do that when the head of Facebook, sorry, Meta, is directly emailing Dr. Fauci, the highest paid government official who's never been elected? Think about that for a second. Dr. Fauci's never been elected by you. How do you make your own social network? Well, you hire some programmers and you do it, like many people have now. You, he's not even your representative, and he's talking with Zuckerberg to give them marching orders who can control what you say. Nothing about that is emblematic of a constitutional who can control what you say on their property. Again, this is a terrible argument. You come in my house and if I have some stupid dumb rule for what you can't say and you say it anyway and I kick you out, this is <laughs> this is fine. There is no victim here. You may not like my rules, but it's your choice not to come on my property. Or public. And nothing about nothing about that can be solved through a preventative measure like libertarianism. It no longer applies here. By the way, Facebook. It's not a problem to be solved is a more correct apt way of saying. Book Alphabet, Apple, Amazon. They've donated millions of dollars to Joe Biden and Democrats in 2020. Not to mention, of course, you have what? Zuckerberg and Twitter 
This is not an and argument just against property to a lesser rights. degree, Google, YouTube censored the Hunter Biden laptop story. Not only did they censor it, they it's censored the story while allowing not an argument. opposition to paint it as Russian propaganda. Right. <laughs> and then said, whoops, we were wrong. Is this a free market? Is this a, yes. is the true libertarian view? Well, Facebook can do whatever it wants. Well, because when you're saying Facebook can do whatever it wants, the libertarian in you is saying, Dr. Fauci, Joe Biden, Hunter Biden. Kamala Harris, Jean-Pierre, they can do whatever they want. You're not talking about a private entity. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because Mark Zuckerberg. False. I can listen to whatever dumbass person I want and make rules for my property in line with whatever those dumbass people say or suggest. And that doesn't eliminate my property rights. I'm Zuckerberg, repeating myself. He, you know, his now. solution to say, oh, we're not as bad as Twitter over there. We can ban the story and. and uh, so called self-called self-titled libertarians um there's several examples that we've experienced over the past couple of years uh pete quinones for example uh, throws property rights out the window when they make rules for their property that pete doesn't like that's not how it works you didn't understand libertarian principle if you think that's how it works and and make them you know go silent for 10 days while their account was banned we just shadow banned it so nobody knew Right. That we were making it to where you didn't see it pop up in your newsfeed. And so it was a significant reduction in the spread of this information that potentially, according to polls, not me, could have changed the outcome of an election. It Look, I, I've been banned from Facebook permanently, called a terrorist, had hundreds of my associations with people that I still haven't gotten back, just deleted photos, family photos, all kinds of stuff gone in an instant because Facebook didn't like what I said. So I am not like some pro Facebook person. But these are terrible arguments for erasing one of the most fundamental rights that we reciprocate between each other. Property rights. You can't just not like what somebody does or who they associate with and just cease respecting them if they haven't aggressed. So it would have changed the right? outcome of the election. I According be, to I Biden careful. voters. I get, us, I get us banned so many times. It's, According it's to time. Biden voters, 12% yeah. of them, I believe, I'm going by rote, said we would have, it would have changed my vote if I yeah. knew about the Hunter Biden laptop story. That switches all of the swing states. Yeah. And how does libertarianism fix that? Let's go on to another. It's not a problem to be fixed. Republicans better get better at messaging if you want to win. Make your own social media where you, I guess, can do dumbass bias stuff like Facebook's been doing. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's 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 uh it's not a problem to libertarianism when people use their property in dumb ways that don't aggress other examples and i have the biggest organizations the biggest companies that have ever existed throughout the history of mankind the west west indian trading company i think employed like a fifth of population earth Jeez. not as powerful now let me do a better job uh, from a libertarian position of illustrating why i certainly uh don't really care to respect the property rights of facebook it's because here are some ways they actually collude with the government. They open, they have wings open in their office where they invite the government, government agents, FBI agents, law enforcement agents in to have direct access to their back end network to spy on people. That is collusion with, uh, with an enemy that is collusion with an aggressor. And if you're going to be a co-conspirator in various crimes against peaceful people, especially secretly, then I don't really care about your property. I don't really care. I, I, I have no uh, onus to respect your property or care when it gets uh, trespassed upon. That's an actual strong argument for it. When they take um, another example would be like uh, AWS, Amazon's cloud hosting provider. They take millions of dollars in money from the government to host their servers for them. A lot of the government infrastructure that's stolen money. You are colluding with the government in providing those services to a coercive entity. As far as I'm concerned, don't really care about your property rights anymore because you don't care about mine. You're taking stolen money from people. These are actual arguments. <laughs> I, I don't know why all the stuff that all this nonsense about them making rules and banning people that they don't like this is this this is all terrible as the big tech companies uh and by the way they all email each other do you think they accidentally all banned alex jones and donald trump within 24 hours of each other Come right on. it's not a conspiracy if it only requires five people to make it happen so let's go to example number two banks hey banks i agree with you i agree with you that banks should have the right to do what banks want to do 
They should be. But banks are not separate from the government. If you look at banks and you look at hedge funds, they manipulate the economy, for example, to short stocks. Before we right. even get into the bailouts, remember Robinhood? Remember they stopped the, the purchasing of GameStop stock for, yeah. just because Redditors were boosting it? Now, you might not like what Redditors were doing, You might not, but guess what? That was a free market. It was a bunch of people yeah. who came together, and then the bank said, well, hold on a second. This is, this is, a, this is too powerful, so we need to make sure that someone steps in uh, from regulatory affairs to stop you from playing the game that we have already rigged. Well, and they sided with Wall Street. They sided with a hedge fund and several hedge funds, really, that were shorting GameStop and right. driving the price down. And basically, people said, that's not fair. We don't like that. And Robinhood steps in and says, it doesn't matter if you like it or not. Right. We're going to put a halt to this so nobody can sell their stock or buy whatever the, the, the parameter. So it's okay when banks manipulate the market in ways that they like, and it's not okay when banks manipulate the market in ways they don't like. When the actual libertarian answer is the government should have absolutely no control or regulation or participation in any way at all in banking and people's free association when it comes to money and assets. Uh, the free market will provide much stronger bulwarks to this stuff and much less corruption and payoffs and and um, insider trading and banking. I'm talking about things like Nancy Pelosi's uh, stock portfolio, for example. Uh, the free market will do a much better job of um, making the whole system function with less victims and less losses uh, and more protections for people than the government ever has or will. Where you just can't trade this stock anymore. It's like, for no reason other than somebody was losing billions of dollars that they liked. Yeah. So we didn't stop it. You just can't trade it. Well, what else would I do with stock? <laughs> it's just sitting there. <laughs> These same banks, by the way, yeah. donate overwhelmingly to Democrats. The myth of the big bank, the fat cat Wall Street banker, right? Republicans. That's, it couldn't be no. further from the truth, certainly in the modern era, maybe once upon a time. Not anymore. So let's look at hedge fund managers. You have Sussman, Snyder, uh, Eichner donated $70 million each to Democrats from 2008 to the 2018 midterms. 2020, Wall Street backed Biden to Trump $74 million to $18 million. Hmm. Uh, Biden has had multiple aides, uh, ties to BlackRock, a venture capital firm, Firm Revolution, a consulting firm, Precision Strategies. These are the biggest companies that exist in the world, right? Too big to fail. And the current yeah. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, founded the consulting firm West Exec, which is, um, or I guess I should say they formally employed also Jen Psaki, CIA Deputy Director David Cohen, no, Director of the be, National Intelligence. Well, what's April Libertarian going to do so about that? It's this unholy alliance yeah. of shit heels across the board. You have people who have worked in these companies, hedge funds, right, who give overwhelmingly to Democrats, who have worked with these banks. Then they get appointed to unelected roles in government. And sometimes that even involves roles in your intelligence committees. Yeah. The CIA, it's the all, FBI. Think about lot, that. Most for of this a is second. true. Think of the path from working for a company that gives seventy-four million dollars to a politician and follow that little trail, right? Like follow the asshole trail, the back of a kid's placemat, <laughs> and you end up say deputy director. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, yep. the most surprising stat that you said in there was that Wall Street backed Biden to Trump, and the number was seventy-four. What does this to have to do with libertarianism? The economy was booming under Donald Trump. If anything, they should have been like, we're rolling in the dough. The, Trump has basically got like the Dow's at 30,000. The Dow's at 30. He's got these like placards thrown in the bathroom because he doesn't have room for them anymore for yeah. the records he was setting. And they're backing. They're, there's you, you no know explanation for that other than they want special treatment. Well, uh, the last time Republicans held um, power in the government for eight years straight. Uh, tell me again how much you did about that. Some, tell me how much you're, you're voting extra hard fix that. Not only special treatment, I can tell you why. The market goes up. Right? The market overall has been going up under Biden, if you look at it overall as a whole. You have bad days, uh, and uh, you can argue about the rate of climb, but the government wins out over time. Uh, sorry, the, the, the market wins out over time. No, you That's said it right probably the first time. Yeah, the government wins out over time. But the market wins out over time. The problem is with Donald Trump, unlike with Joe Biden. Look, is anyone buying this shit when they say the economy's boom? You know it's not. I know it's not. They tried to say... Keep in mind, under Jimmy Carter and under Barack Obama, they tried to gaslight you and say, no, no, the economy's great. Everyone knew that it wasn't the case. You would even have the biggest detractors of Donald Trump saying, well, what's the economy worth when you have someone who brings shame to us on an international stage? The reason why the market wins out, the banks will do fine no matter what. It's that the average American was doing better. Yeah. The banks could be doing better if the average Americans were doing slightly worse. The banks could be, even though they're making tons of money, hand over fist, billions of dollars going to yeah. these CEOs, who, by the way, are glorified managers. They're not actual business owners. They say, but we could make more billions if we create a permanent class of renters. 
We could make more billions if the average salary under Donald Trump, the average salary went up like $5,000. I think under Barack Obama, the first, was it eight years? It was 1300 Three years of Donald Trump was $5,000. The average American benefited, and the banks and Wall Street benefited also. Right now, Wall Street banks are beneficiaries at your expense. That's the big difference. But here's the thing. Greed cannot harm you from big banks if they don't receive bailouts, if they don't get preferential treatment. The less and, red tape there is. And who more than libertarians want to get rid of those bailouts and collusion in government? The, print, the consistent libertarian position is your government is eliminated and isn't even there to do any of that stuff and to give those advantages. <laughs> it, it is the biggest antidote uh, to the situation, unlike voting for Republicans or Democrats, which has been proven for hundreds of years to not work and, in fact, to make it worse. Is the harder it is for them to get ahead. Why do you think these giant corporations always support big government policies? Because it eliminates the mom and pop competition. Yeah. Again, is your libertarianism, how is it going to solve this here? I'm gonna tell you, here's the answer. Are you listening? Because you obviously don't know what you're talking about. Libertarianism eliminates the government. Consistently held libertarian principles allows precisely zero room for your government to exist and to do any of that and allows for defensive use of force when necessary to protect yourself from that, from your government's coercion. That's what it does. It actually does something. It actually allows for something to be done. Unlike your political persuasion, which just begs people to vote again and again and again, 50 years from now, you're still going to be begging people to vote again and again. And the government will undoubtedly be way worse than it is today in almost every way. Mark my words. I, I'm not even worried about making that prediction. That is what libertarianism does. What does your ideology do makes it worse. And if your answer is go in and just slash up, it's not going to happen. That's not what, that's not what happens with our legislative process. That's a problem with your legislative process. Then what are you going to do about that? You're going to vote to fix it. How's that worked? How do you fix it? Libertarianism right now, it's a preventative measure that cannot offer a solution. It is not preventative and it offers a very direct solution that you apparently don't want to acknowledge, don't know about. I don't know. Weird. So let's, we've, we've hit, do you have anything else to add? We have, okay. We have big tech, we have banks. All right. Now we can go on to other corporations being an arm of the government. These are sort of what we might say miscellaneous, uh, yeah, special interest groups, um, like, Planned Parenthood, 45 million to back Democrats in 2020 election. Maybe that explains why in 2019, all but three Democrats voted against the Born Alive Survivors Protection Act. And that's one of the few bills that is aptly named, just to be clear. Yes, yes. It means what it says. Like the Green New Deal. Like, what is that? I don't know what that means. Well, th that's by design. The Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. Here, I want you to picture what it actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, babies were being born alive and they were being allowed to die. Wasn't happening in huge numbers, but it was enough if it was more than zero and uh, Democrats voted against it. Hmm. I wonder why. All of them. All except for three with a conscience. Now we, have, we go on to Visa, MasterCard, American Express, who, by the way, have received billions of dollars in bailout money. They're now all going to track gun purchases using a new purchase code, which, by the way... Okay, on abortion, uh, the correct, consistent libertarian position on abortion is that abortion is always murder in all circumstances. The only justification for such an act would be in the case of rape. Um, and in that case, it shouldn't be an, a straight up abortion. It should be what uh, what is called and put forward by a guy named Walter Block uh, called evictionism, which means that you uh, evict the baby from the womb, causing as little damage as possible, giving it every opportunity to, to live and survive. And any negative outcomes of that procedure uh, falls on the rapist and they're culpable for whatever damage they've caused through the rape. That's the, that is the consistent libertarian position. Uh, as far as I can tell, are there a lot of libertarians that are bad on this issue? Absolutely. There are, but there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of everybody that's wrong on a lot of things everywhere and all ideologies. Um, the, the pro abortion crowd in, in, uh, amongst libertarians is, uh, very loud because they, think it's a way to attract the left to their group. Um, I think it's terrible and uh, an abomination. It's the, it's the slavery of our generation. We're going to be looked back on as monsters that allowed it to continue. Um, so 
Yeah, that's libertarianism. Could be provided to the government, considering that private data has been given over to the government by these companies in the past. Let There's no one that's more uh, consistently pro-gun from a principled position than uh, libertarians, because you have the right to own literally whatever you want to own, as long as you do it peacefully and without threatening the people around you. Um, last I checked, we got uh, a bump stock ban recently. Was that from a, was that from a Democrat? No, no, it was from a guy that the Republicans voted in. Hmm. Let's look at airlines. One of your favorite, mm. one of your favorite businesses, I'm sure they're beholden to the government after receiving over $54 billion in bailouts. And I think that's even just the most recent round with COVID-19 relief. Hey, hold on a second. Now that we're back in full swing, has, has that been passed on to you? Let's think about it. libertarians, right? The free market. Do you get a bag of peanuts? <laughs> uh, did, did you just suggest that the government taking stolen tax money and handing it to a big corporation is the free market? I mean, maybe whoever wrote the script that you're reading right now, uh, I don't know, fell asleep or something, but that's precisely the opposite of a free market and nothing that a libertarian would support. This is embarrassing. Uh, for you right now, Crowder. Come on. <laughs> what about the check? What about the check baggage fee? Ha, is is your air, airline experience now more pleasant, or at least as pleasant as it was pre-COVID, or does it still suck? Because once the government, the biggest thing that sucks about air travel is everything that the government touches: TSA, um, mask restrictions, all of this. Like, look, competition is not allowed. If I want to start my own airline that doesn't do any of these terrible things and completely obliterate every bit of competition in the airline industry by not doing all this stupid shit that people hate, I will be prevented from doing so by the free market. Of course not by your government, your government that you vote for reliably every chance you get steps in and says, all right, we're going to give you this money. It comes with strings attached. Guess what? It never gets better. It only gets worse. So let me recap this for you. And I'd like you, you know, comment below. If you disagree, I have a lot of libertarian friends. And I agree with the principles of it. I'm just saying that pragmatically, it doesn't apply here. What do we have? We have collusion between big tech. And what do I mean? The most powerful companies that have ever existed. You've got Facebook. You've got. Yeah. People using property in ways that you don't like. Got Sorry, it. Meta. <laughs> <sighs> Whatever. Like, gonna, like, like, we don't know what that means. So you've got Meta, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Google, Amazon, Apple, right? Okay. So we have collusion between them. All the banks, all the big credit card companies, multiple corp. Banks are damn near um, owned by the government. I mean, they are so completely regulated. If I wanted to start a business and make it an actual free market bank business, uh, it would be, it would be impossible. Corporations and special interest groups. So I agree with him there. Where do you, you're a citizen. Where do you go? If you want to live in a free market, well, just don't be anywhere in big tech. Go create your own. Well, you know, just uh, don't do any banking with big bank. Go create your own. Well, just don't use. Social media, you can, because it's as of yet, not regulated on, well, excuse, hold on. Let, let's point out some hypocrisy here. Crowder just finished calling for regulation. So he's trying to take one of the few industries we have left that isn't controlled by government and get government in there to decide what speech is and isn't allowed. Like that's going to turn out well. <laughs> so, and then he's, now he's going to sit here and complain about um, us not being able to start our own versions of things when he's calling for regulation over one of the few areas in which you actually can. And, and I, I have worked towards starting competition float. For example, there's um, mines, for example, there's all the Republican versions of social media out there. Now, this is the one industry where you're still free to compete. And rather than calling for competition, uh, espoused by the principles he claims to uphold he calls for regulation and then out of in the same sentence turns around and complains that you can't compete with these other industries like banking and airlines that are so fully regulated you can't effectively uh compete any of the major credit card companies just use cryptocurrency yeah that'll never be regulated if it becomes as powerful as fiat sure. currency airlines go buy a plane the point is we are at a point where it's not something that you can simply solve through free market alternatives because they have been locked down and that can only happen through the corruption that has taken place between the government and these corporations. And I get it. The irony is not lost on me that we do need some fighters in government to try and roll this back because it cannot simply be solved through the free market at this point. It doesn't exist. The problem was created by your government and is enabled and grown by your participation in your government. 
So expecting the free market to be able to fix coercion that you helped bring to the world is kind of silly. Like, wake up, man. The libertarian solution is to get rid of the thing doing the coercion. And your solution is to keep begging the thing that's doing the coercion for a, for a few extra scraps of freedom. Pathetic. Pathetic. You have hundreds of years of data showing you that your strategy doesn't work. You've already lost. You've lost all of our liberties. Your, your strategies don't work. Your constitution hasn't protected me and my children and my, my freedom it already failed. So what are you going to do? Oh, you're just going to keep doing the same thing. <laughs> Come on, please. Anyway, I hope this was uh, the commentary you were looking for from you guys until next time.